I'm going to start with how we looked at melanoma in 2009. We called melanoma an orphan tumour. It was the only solid tumour for which there was no drug therapy that prolonged overall survival. Now that has changed. So today I would like to celebrate the achievements that have been made in melanoma, Australia's cancer. But more importantly, I would like to focus on the incredible uh, contribution that MIA, Melanoma Institute Australia, has made to these achievements. But we can't rest on our laurels. And before I go on to celebrate all these achievements, I think it's a good reminder to look at the death from cancer. If you look at all the major cancers, bowel cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, in the last decade, the death rate has dropped. Where does melanoma fit in this? We have not made any change to the death rate from melanoma in the last decade. So we still have a lot more work to do. But we have a wonderful foundation and have achieved so much that I would like to celebrate those to show you what we can do moving into the future. I do uh, want to remind you that the majority of melanomas are actually cured by surgery, as was uh, Arnie's melanoma just before Terminator 2. However, for the patients where the knife does not cure their melanoma, the melanoma has a tendency to spread to multiple organs in the body and cause uh, rapid death. Until recently, we've had not any drug treatment to change this course of melanoma. So one of the most significant findings was this mutation in melanoma, which has been discussed already, the BRAF mutation. It's a genetic abnormality in the melanoma cells. And it was only uh, within the last decade that this was discovered, and within a decade we were already treating patients with drugs called BRAF inhibitors. And at MIA, we were critical in the clinical development of these drugs. And what these drugs do is they essentially put the brake on the melanoma and stop it from reproducing and, and being immortal. So this is a picture from our first in human study from one of our studies. And this is a PET scan which looks at the metabolism of the tumour. And you can see before treatment, this poor patient has so much disease throughout all their organs and within 15 days, we have switched off the tumour. That's normal, by the way. The, the, the black in the brain, that's normal uptake. So all of the tumour has had its metabolism switched off in a matter of, of days. And in fact, it really impacts young people because this BRAF mutation is particularly prevalent in people less than 40. In fact, less than 40-year-olds, 80 to 100% of them have this BRAF mutation in their tumour. This patient was narcotic dependent, uh, uh, infusion dependent, bed bound with her melanoma and within weeks returned back to normal life, uh, completed a PhD, wrote two papers and travelled overseas. The drugs work. You can see here the, the melanoma in the liver. Within six weeks we can't appreciate any melanoma in the liver. But there is a catch. And you can see from this progression-free survival curve that there is a clear difference between these new drugs in the yellow and the old chemotherapy. We are really prolonging progression-free survival. However, most patients do relapse. This is not a cure. So what we're doing here at Melanoma Institute Australia is, is a platform that we use to look at why patients relapse and why res patients respond so well. It is actually the envy of the world that we can get this going, and it's because of our diverse skills and our will and our academic focus to make something like this sort of project happen. And this is only one of many, many things that we are doing across the board. So we take biopsies before treatment, we take a biopsy early during treatment, and we take a biopsy when patients have progressed. And we explore why some patients respond well and can we enhance that response and why patients don't respond so well and can we improve their response because ultimately we would like to eradicate the disease or at least make it a chronic illness, not a death sentence. This is some of the team team. It is a big uh, operation uh, and this is after we have the tissue. Uh, again, diverse skills, clinicians, scientists, pathologists, surgeons, 
Uh, it's a big undertaking. And what about brain metastases, melanoma that is spread to the brain? This is one of the biggest problems for melanoma. It is morbid, it's frequent. 70% of patients who develop metastatic melanoma develop melanoma that spreads to the brain and it is difficult to treat. There is not one single drug therapy that can deal with these uh, melanomas, except our discovery here at MIA in Westmead that these drugs actually work in the brain. And this patient had more than 20 brain metastases. By week four, you can see they've markedly decreased. By week 10, we can't actually see them. What about other achievements? Uh, John Thompson is rated number one melanoma expert in the world. Richard Scolier, the most cited mel melanoma pathologist in the world. Cancer Institute New South Wales, outstanding cancer research fellow twice. Jonathan Stretch, awarded an AM this year. Richard, uh, Rick Richard Kefford, Helen Rizos, Graham Mann, Nick Haywood, Peter Hersey, together with all the people that come together in this institute, over 180 because in the last 18 months, that is three per week. And these are in high impact journals. We're talking New England Journal of Medicine, uh, Lancet, uh, Nature, Journal of Clinical Oncology. So let's break it down and see what we have achieved just in the last 18 months. So let's look at the beginning. Who is at risk? How can we prevent melanoma? Five new melanoma susceptibility genes have been identified. MIT-F is a melanoma susceptibility gene. All work here. The role of sunbeds in melanoma. Did you know that patients or people who are less than 30 years old who have used sunbeds and have a melanoma, 75% of those melanomas are directly due to sunbed use. Again, work done here. Diagnosis and prognosis. Gene expression profiling in high-risk patients. What dictates their prognosis? What are the genes behind that? The BRAF mutation, how that impacts prognosis for patients where melanoma has spread. Again, work done here. Treatment, I've already discussed uh, the BRAF inhibitors, dibrafenib, again, brain metastases here. Uh, a type of BRAF mutation that's much less common, V600K, that is Australia's mutation. It's due to chronic sun damage. These drugs would not have been developed in that population without MIA. We pushed that these drugs be tested because 20% of our patients have that mutation and stand to benefit from these drugs. Trials of combined therapies looking at why people relapse, how can we add drugs together to get a better clinical outcome, mechanisms of resistance, the immune response, work done here. We discovered that early during treatment with these BRAF inhibitors, there's a huge immune response. How can we sequence other drugs, immunotherapies, to improve patient outcome? Uh, the other accolades, $5 million of capital grant funding went to MIA wet laboratories at Westmead Millennium Institute, the NHMRC fellowships, uh, Cancer Institute New South Wales fellowships, program grants, project grants. There is not a single week that goes by that we don't have an MIA representative on some international podium. Our international collaborations, which are key to some of these major developments. But it is all founded on three things. Number one, the patients. We see 1,400 patients per annum through this institute. And we have the largest clinical database and biospecimen bank in the world for melanoma. But I want to make a point. These last two are critical for our work. Without them, we would not be progressing melanoma. We would just be treating melanoma. We need to progress melanoma. And this is what we find the most difficult to fund. We cannot get funding for these basic infrastructure as easily as other things. We know that there's a healthy triangle in clinical care. Clinical care is one element, but if you do not have robust research and if you don't have robust training and education, you won't be moving things forward. And that's what we have here, robust research. And I'd like to thank you for your support, for putting in the uh, support to make these, these, these things and these achievements happen. We are very, very vulnerable. 90% of our research staff are funded on peer review grants. 
There is zero career stability on grants. There is highly restricted advancement, opportunity for advancement when you are funded by grants. In terms of funding from infra for infrastructure directly from the government, we have it for the Westmead uh, lab, wet labs only. Most independent research institutes have more than 30% of funding from donors to keep them viable and keep that research arm of that healthy triangle going. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for your support. I'd like to thank our collaborators, the scientists, our clinicians, our research staff, our administration staff, and, and mostly our donors and the government for all the help and support for this incredibly important endeavour for melanomas, can, uh, Australia's cancer melanoma. Melanoma, thank you.